Well, in the, in the 1800s, there in, in northern Europe, in the Scandinavian countries in particular, there was, there was a revival taking place among the laity, among those as sitting in the pews of the stately churches, and there was a state church. <clears throat> if you were born into that country, you were born into that church, and you lived by the rituals and by the form of religion. And yet there wasn't any true spirituality, true function uh, in those lives necessarily, until a thing happened. <clears throat> this word of God that was now being printed in the common language was being distributed around so that anyone could read the word of God. As people began to read the Word of God, there in the pews, so to speak, the Holy Spirit started to work in their life, like the Holy Spirit worked in my life, that, that brought them to an awareness of what the true gospel was and how it was a personal relationship with Christ, not this corporate state thing, and they started to give their lives to Christ, one by one, by tens and, and on. Well, this new life, like myself, it went from black and white to color for them as well, and so they started to, to gather with others that were having a similar experience, a, a revival taking place. And interestingly, it was called the small f free church movement at that time because it wasn't from the state church that this, uh, or from the organized church that this took place, but from the laity that then started to form themselves uh, in gatherings free from that state church. And so they would gather to have Bible studies. They would gather to, to have baptisms. They would gather to do communion. And, and they, would, they would start sharing their faith apart from the clergy and the state church of that particular time. Well, of course, the clergy didn't like what was going on. And so because they were a part of the state, they declared it illegal to be doing and associating and things of that sort. But the verse that I picked for today that we could, go, that we could look at uh, new Bible. I love new Bibles. Don't you love new Bibles? Oh, I just got, and then, and then I get it, and I start turning, and I go and start underlining all my favorite passages. One of the first ones that I went to, one that you're hopefully familiar with, is the Great Commission. So it was these verses that led me to Christ as lived out by those laymen and that pastor in that local evangelical free church in my hometown. And it's this passage that then led me into ministry so that I could be a part of the same. And it reads like this, from verse 16 I'll begin. He says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain, where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. I love the reality of the, of the scriptures here. Some doubted. But then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the, name of the, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. It was this commission that those believers back in the 1800s, mid-1800s, wanted to live out. They wanted to go make disciples. They wanted to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They wanted to continue to, to teach others uh, to obey the commands of Jesus. And they acknowledged that the Holy Spirit uh, was going to be with them uh, and, and, and help them in that witness. And yet the state kept uh, persecuting them and putting them down. And so for freedom of mission ex expression and Christian faith expression, uh, they, they left the Scandinavian countries... And they came to America, and this was in, the, again, the mid to late 1800s that this, took, this migration took place. Of course, by this time in the United States, the eastern seaboard had already been uh, populated, and so they, they immigrated over to the Midwest and to the upper Midwest. They're used to the north, uh, and so uh, that's where they, they immigrated to. And, uh, and that's where their mission expression started to take place as they were able to freely share about their faith in Christ, disciple others, start churches, and, and continue to multiply themselves out. Uh, and it's that same, it's that, it's that particular uh, commissioning and vision that they had that brought them to the States that started that church in Columbus, Nebraska, that then had a pastor that, that, that realized it's not just my job as a pastor to do this work, but I'm going to equip those in the pews, you know, every person, 
uh, to be able to, was a minister for God, to be able to reach out into the community to which my life was reached, and I got incorporated into that. And so I came to Christ on Monday night, December 12th, 1971, as a senior in high school. My first time in that Highland Park Evangelical Free Church was December 18th, that next Sunday, to where those same coaches and teachers and everyone around discipled me and encouraged me in the Lord and, uh, and actually encouraged me to go into full-time Christian work and to continue uh, to, uh, to play out this great commission. So the backstory of the Free Church is one out of revival. It's one out of a personal relationship with God. It's one out of, of acknowledging the Word of God, and it alone is the authority for our Christian life and our Christian practice. Acknowledging the Holy Spirit with this Word that gives life to us, and they wanted to be able to, to live out that expression. 